Alrighty, so mead is, what is mead? It's just a honey wine. It's honey, water, natural yeast, or additive yeast, and you let it ferment, and it makes a very um, historical wine, I guess it's known as the Viking wine, what they would have drank. Um, it is super sweet, so consider it like a dessert wine. You can try to do things to it to make it less sweet. I'm doing a little bit of that today because it's almost too sweet for me. But there are a thousand recipes online. Everyone can make mead however they feel free to express themselves in their kitchen. Um, but the basics are honey, water, yeast. And I have a lot of already pre-mixed honey water from when we um, had all the wax scrapings from harvesting our bees. We slowly, slowly over a low heat rendered that wax out, adding some water, letting the wax flow to the top, and I filtered all the byproduct of honey water. Um, and it's super thick. My estimate is that this is probably one cup of honey per quart jar of honey water. And anywhere from two and a half cups to three cups of honey per gallon of water is what I'm going for. And I have three carboys that we'll be working with. We've got raisins, vanilla beans, cinnamon sticks, cranberries, chamomile. So I'm gonna be throwing all that together First, I'm just getting my water heated up behind me, and I'll bring you guys with the process. We won't be able to finish the wine today, but I'll show you in case you're interested to start it at home where you are in time for the holidays, you can follow along. Okay, the water's brought, been brought up to a boil behind me. This has been stored in the refrigerator, so combining those together, I'm gonna get close to room temperature on this um, batch that I'm making. Um, these are dried cranberries, a half a cup. So one batch is going to have cranberries and a cinnamon stick. And then the other two batches will have raisins and vanilla bean. They will both get some chamomile added to it with just some chamomile tea bags. And I honestly, I don't know what the chamomile does for it, but it's part of a recipe that sounded really lovely to me. And chamomile, I guess, just kind of tastes like honey to me when I make chamomile tea. Alrighty, so we got our cranberries in there. I'm gonna go in with half a cup of raisins in the other one. Other fruits like thawed raspberries, strawberries, pear, kiwi. You can get so creative with making your meads at home. We're just gonna keep it basic. And honestly, we've tried this once before and doing it this time of year, specifically for the holidays, I think I'll do a better job. But last time we kind of did uh, one of those set it and truly forget it. So we just forgot all about it uh, down in the basement and it, it sat for just a little too long before bottling it up. All right, I got all my raisins in. So we have our three jars, raisins, cranberries and raisins. Gonna go in with the raisins now with two, and they have been split open. Can you guys see that? Split open vanilla beans. They're just grade B, nothing fancy. And uh, cranberry, we'll go in with a cinnamon stick. And then I just have um, plain um, chamomile tea bags. So I'm gonna put four in each. All right, guys, I'm trying to be super careful now filling these 
uh, carboys because I have just enough to make what I want to make. And this initial fermentation, once I get it all ready, I think it takes like four to seven weeks. Four weeks it could be done. You probably want to do your first taste test and then it could keep bubbling for up to seven weeks. And then you can consume it then or you can bottle it up and let it age for a little bit. Um, mead connoisseurs definitely say uh, aging it um, really balances the flavors really well. So I think I'm gonna go, what I'm trying to get is uh, one and a half quarts in here to start with and then balance any remaining that I have across all the bottles. All right, now I'm just gonna top off these jars with this hot water. And we're just going to like the neck. Just a gentle stir just to incorporate all that hot and warm water because I want to add the yeast very similar to making bread you don't want to add it to too hot a water so it doesn't kill the yeast all right one thing I didn't mention at the beginning of the video is you do want to work with super clean equipment so everything sanitized we used um, I think it's called Santa Star and it's a bottle sanitizer Wash your hands real good. Make sure your equipment's all clean. Now is the last step to add our yeast. What did I do with my spoon? Hold on one sec. And it's a half of a packet of champagne yeast. And that one packet is five grams. So I'm gonna try to, let's see, use my little scale and get out just, oh no, uh, two and a half grams. All right, so we will let that yeast do its thing. Give it a little stir. And now we get to put our airlocks on and the raisins, the cranberries, the honey will all feed this yeast over the next several weeks. And we're, I will do my best. You're hearing it from me right now. I will do my best to come back with a video when it's time to rack this off and bottle it up for some awesome Christmas gifts. And if you don't see it then, and you're interested in homemade Christmas gift giving idea, I have a whole playlist of all the things I like to make homemade for Christmas gifts in the past. And you can expect to see one of these bottles in a future Christmas gift giving uh, video. So thanks guys for coming along with me. It's just the very first thing that I needed to get done with respect to preserving and getting things ready for the upcoming holiday season. Next up, we got to can potatoes. We got to get a lot of stuff done can more chicken, all kinds of fun things. So I'll see you guys on the next video. I almost forgot to show you guys putting the airlocks on. All right, here, put our little corks in. Oops, we have these little airlocks. Todd, are these supposed to be even or does it not matter? As long as they have water in them. Okay. They should be about half full. Okay. And that goes in there and it just keeps the bacteria from getting in and allows the gas and the fermentation bubbles to escape somewhere. Put that one in here. And then a different version is just one like this. And put that one in there. And then I'm going to put these in a dark location out of direct sunlight. 
So see you back.